Oh, you decided to come back. Welcome to episode two of the Intro to Linux. All right, if you're watching this video, I assume that you've watched part one of the Intro to Linux that I posted earlier this week. This video is going to show you how you can try out Linux without actually having to make any changes to your system. Now, if you've seen my recent video about Ubuntu Loco Teams, I'll put an annotation up there in the corner. An Ubuntu Loco Team is a local community team. It's a group of people in the same area with the same idea who like to use the same operating system. If you have a Loco in your area, you should be able to get one of these. This is an Ubuntu Live CD. As you see, it's just a plain, ordinary disk. It's got a copy of Ubuntu Linux on it that runs live on your system without making any changes to it. If you are one of the many unfortunate people who don't have a local team near you, or if your local team is out of CDs, you can go to ubuntu.com and click the Get Ubuntu Download button. There are full instructions on that site for how to download and burn the copy of the CD, so if you need any more help with that, post a comment and I'm sure I can answer you below. Otherwise, go to ubuntuforums.org, I'll put a link right here, and you should be able to find answers to whatever you need immediately. So assuming that you've got a copy of the CD or you've downloaded and burned a copy now, also, if you're using a netbook or a laptop that doesn't have a CD-ROM drive, or even a desktop that doesn't have a CD-ROM drive, you can download a program for Windows that will allow you to take that image from the Ubuntu website and put it onto a USB drive. So if you have a USB flash drive, like one of these, you can actually take that full image from the Ubuntu website and put it straight onto the disk. Alternatively, if you've got a copy of the Ubuntu CD, it has a USB creator for Windows on the disk now. Go ahead and take that CD and stick it in your computer CD-ROM drive, and then restart your computer. One thing to remember is, when you're restarting your computer, it may not automatically boot to the CD. If it doesn't, it means that your BIOS is probably not set to allow you to boot from CD first. So what you need to do, restart the computer again, and it should say something to the effect of, press F2 for setup, press delete for setup, usually it's F2 or delete, it could be another key, but it should say it at the bottom of the screen, what you need to hit. Once you're in your BIOS setup, be very careful in here. You could actually screw some things up, but look for something that says boot options. And you're gonna want to set your CD-ROM drive or USB if you're using a USB stick to be up at the top at the first one. Okay, assuming that you've got that BIOS setting changed or you've already booted to the live CD, you should be seeing just a simple Ubuntu desktop. I'm not gonna walk you through all the options, obviously. You can do that yourself, but you'll see that there's a Firefox icon in the top bar. There's a list of applications categorized. There's a software center where you can install new applications. None of this affects your live system unless you go through the install process. There's an icon on the desktop that says install and it's in the menu there somewhere also. So as far as you try it before you buy it, the Live CD is the perfect way to test out the operating system, to see how it works with your hardware, to see if you actually like to use it or not. But yeah, basically that's all as far as using a Live CD goes. You can browse the internet using Firefox or whatever other browser you see installed there. You can use the Software Center to install additional software, so if you want a different browser it should be in there. If it's not, you might have to do some additional tweaking. That's for a later episode. You've got email clients, you've got instant messaging clients, picture editors, you've got music players, you've got some very limited games. But like I said before, you can actually install new software while you're running the live CD. It installs to memory so you don't actually change anything. So feel free to try out whatever you like in that Software Center. It's not going to hurt anything unless you hit the install button. So by all means, don't hit it yet. And of course, to finish this up, when you're done browsing the live environment, when you're done playing with Linux and you and you decide you want to go back to Windows or you want to go back to your normal desktop environment, if you're not using Windows, using Mac or something else, go to the upper right-hand corner of your screen. There should be a little power symbol. It's a little circle with a line in it. Click on that and it should have a drop down that will give you the option to shut down the computer. And when the live CD shuts the system down, it actually pops out the CD or it tells you eject the CD and hit enter to continue. Assuming you hit the restart option, as soon as you hit enter after the CD is removed, your system should reboot and come back up into Windows or whatever you use normally continue with your life, and that's all there really is to the live CD. Make sure to come back for episode 3, I'm going to show you how to use Wubby in Windows. It's the next logical step for a traditional Windows user. It allows you to actually install Ubuntu, but it doesn't affect your partitions, it doesn't affect your boot records directly, and at the end of the day, if you want to uninstall it, you go into Windows and you tell it uninstall Ubuntu. It's another great way to try it before you buy it, and actually test it out before you replace Windows on your machine. As always, thank you for watching, I will see you next time. <laughs>